When you come into the land which the Lord your God gives you for an inheritance, and have taken possession of it, and live in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God gives you, and you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place which the Lord your God will choose to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare this day to the Lord your God that I have come into the land which the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number, and there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God, and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good which the Lord your God has given to you, and to your house, you and the Levite, and the sojourner who is among you. When you have finished paying all the tithe of your produce in the third year, which is the year of tithing, giving it to the Levite, the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat within your towns and be filled, then you shall say before the Lord your God, I have removed the sacred portion of my house, and moreover, I have given it to the Levite, the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, according to all your commandment, which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed any of your commandments, neither have I forgotten them. I have not eaten of the tithe while I was mourning, or removed any of it while I was unclean, or offered any of it to the dead. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord my God. I have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation, from heaven, and bless your people Israel, and the ground which you have given us, as you swore to our fathers a land flowing with milk and honey. This day the Lord your God commands you to do these statutes and ordinances. You shall therefore be careful to do them with all your heart and with all your soul. You have declared this day concerning the Lord that he is your God, and that you will walk in his ways, and keep his statutes and his commandments and his ordinances, and will obey his voice. And the Lord has declared this day concerning you, that you are a people for his own possession, as he has promised you, and that you are to keep all his commandments, that he will set you high above all nations that he has made, in praise and in fame and in honor, and that you shall be a people holy to the Lord your God, as he has spoken. Now Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandment which I command you this day, and on the day you pass over the Jordan to the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall set up large stones, and plaster them with plaster, and you shall write upon them all the words of this law, when you pass over to enter the land which the Lord your God gives you, a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you. And when you have passed over the Jordan, you shall set up these stones, concerning which I command you this day, on Mount Ebal, and you shall plaster them with plaster. And there you shall build an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones. You shall lift up no iron tool upon them. You shall build an altar to the Lord your God of unhewn stones, and you shall offer burnt offerings on it to the Lord your God. And you shall sacrifice peace offerings, and you shall eat there, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God. And you shall write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. And Moses and the Levitical priests and to all Israel, Keep silence and hear, O Israel. This day you have become the people of the Lord your God. You shall therefore obey the voice of the Lord your God, keeping his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day. And Moses charged the people the same day, saying, When you have passed over the Jordan, these shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. And these shall stand upon Mount Ebal for the curse, 
Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. And the Levites shall declare to all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man who makes a graven or molten image, an abomination to the Lord, a thing made by the hands of a craftsman, and sets it up in secret. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Cursed be he who dishonors his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he who removes his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he who misleads a blind man on the road, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he who perverts the justice due to the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he who lies with his father's wife, because he has uncovered her, who is his father's. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he who lies with any kind of beast. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he who lies with his sister, whether the daughter of his father or the daughter of his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he who lies with his mother-in-law. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he who slays his neighbor in secret, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he who takes a bribe to slay an innocent person, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he who does not confirm the words of this law by doing them, and all the people shall say, Amen. And if you obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments which I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your beasts, the increase of your cattle, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading trough. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way, and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing upon you in your barns, and in all that you undertake, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself, as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruit of your body, and in the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your ground, within the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give the rain of your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head, and not the tail. And you shall tend upward only, and not downward. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, being careful to do them, and if you do not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. To the choir master with stringed instruments. A Psalm of Asaph, a song. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. His abode has been established in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of war. Selah. Glorious are you, more majestic than the everlasting mountains. The stout-hearted were stripped of their spoil. They sank into sleep. All the men of war were unable to use their hands. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both rider and horse lay stunned. But you, you are awesome. Who can stand before you when once your anger is roused? From the heavens you pronounced judgment. The earth feared and was still when God arose to establish judgment to save the oppressed of the earth. Selah. Surely the wrath of men shall praise you. The residue of wrath you will bind around you. Make your vows to the Lord your God and perform them. Let all around him bring gifts to him who is to be feared, who cuts off the spirit of princes, 
who was awesome to the kings of the earth. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And inspired by the Spirit, he came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is spoken against. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that thoughts out of many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years from her virginity, and as a widow, till she was eighty-four. She did not depart from the temple, worshipping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she gave thanks to God and spoke of him to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Jesus' presentation in the temple is a mystery that is often misunderstood. This event, however, is so important that it was chosen as one of the joyful mysteries of the Rosary. But what is the presentation really about? The practice of presenting the firstborn son in the temple goes back to the time of Deuteronomy. In God's original plan, the firstborn son of every family was to be a priest to that family. However, after Israel's sin of the golden calf, the firstborn sons lost this privilege of priesthood which became confined to the tribe of Levi, the only tribe of Israel that appeared to condemn the idolatry of the golden calf. From this point on, every firstborn son was to be presented to the Levitical priests along with an offering, essentially thanking them for performing the priestly duties that they could no longer do. In this light, it's fascinating to see Mary and Joseph doing this as well. The humility of this event is striking. Jesus would be perfectly faithful to what God had asked of his people, but was simultaneously pointing ahead to a time when the priesthood of the Old Testament would become obsolete and Jesus himself would become the once and for all eternal high priest. Are you faithful to what God has asked of you?